Hi everyone, this is Emily Leapart here for Tailored Expressions, and in today's video I'm sharing projects using the ingredients from the Very Cherry Kit. Here's a look at what you get with this gorgeous kit. The first ingredient is the Very Cherry Cling and Clear Combo. This large rubber cling background stamps a full A2 outline, and the clear stamp set fills in those cherries and leaves. There are two sizes of cherries and three sizes of leaves. Next is the Very Cherry Stencil, which are little hearts that fill in the space around the cherries on the cling stamp. This is the open scallop circle, and it consists of two dies. It creates a beautiful scalloped frame that looks like a flower. It has piercing along the outer rim of the main die, and then there's a smaller die in the center that you can use to cut a window for a recessed sentiment or image, or to create a shaker. This is the Cherry on Top mini stamp set and its coordinating dies. The filler stamps that come with the Very Cherry Cling background will also fill in these cherries and leaves. This stamp set also includes five sweet and punny sentiments, two little words, and four hearts in different sizes. As always, there are six envelopes, two in each color, and they are Cherry Pop, Strawberry Milkshake, and Pea Pod. There are also matching envelope seals, two each, in Cherry Pop, Strawberry Milkshake, and Black. The red ones say hello, the pink ones say sweet, and the black ones don't have a sentiment on them. Let's get started on my projects. First, I place an A2 panel of sugar cube cardstock in my mini Misty stamping tool, and I hold it in place with temporary adhesive. I position the very cherry cling background and ink it up with Oreo ink. I ink it up in both directions and re-stamp it a second time to get complete coverage. Then I swap out the panel for an A2 panel cut from Strawberry Milkshake. I thought it would be fun to stamp this background on colored cardstock for a more dramatic card. Plus, I want my cards to be inspired by the color theme of the kit, and that makes it easy for me to coordinate colors for each element on all three cards that I'll be making. I ink up the Strawberry Milkshake panel in the same way, and set it aside while I use the Very Cherry Clear Stamps to fill in the Sugar Cube panel. Since I'm switching from rubber cling to clear stamps, I have to pop the foam mat back into the Misty. For the larger cherries, I'm stamping them in Cherry Pop ink and inking them up twice with my mini ink cubes. This color is incredibly rich, and I think it just became my new favorite red. I keep going until all the large cherries have been stamped. Some are on the very edge of the panel, so I slide in a piece of scrap paper so the foam mat doesn't get all inky. After all the large cherries are stamped, I switch to the small cherry, which I stamp with Strawberry Milkshake ink. I hadn't used much of this color before, but it's literally the most perfect shade of pink. Not too chalky, and it looks amazing with cherry pop. After all the small cherries are stamped, I move to the leaves. I was torn between stamping all three leaf sizes in pea pod, but decided to add two other shades of green for visual interest. I stamped the largest leaves in pea pod, the medium leaves in Granny Smith, and the smallest leaves in cilantro. I loved this finished background so much that I didn't want to use it. It looks like patterned paper. I might have to stamp a few of these just to keep on the side and admire. I was really surprised at how well the strawberry milkshake cherries popped, even on the strawberry milkshake cardstock. It really makes a bold statement. On a separate panel, I stamp both of the cherry images from the mini cherry on top stamp set and use the filler images I used on the very cherry cling background to color them. This time I also stamped the cherries in Cherry Pop and Strawberry Milkshake, but I used Pea Pod and Granny Smith to ombre stamp the leaves. I stamped one end of the leaves with Pea Pod and the other end with Granny Smith. I used a sponge dauber to blur the transition lines before stamping the image on the cardstock. Stamping the image twice in this manner softens the transition lines even further, and a third stamping in the lighter of the two colors perfects the blending. This is my favorite way to add dimension on solid images. Here's a look at the completed backgrounds and images. Looking back, I really love how these look without the added hearts from the Very Cherry Stencil, so I'd even make different versions by keeping them simpler. Now I'm going to use my wire snips to separate the two parts of the open scallop circle. I die cut two pieces, a solid one from Sugar Cube cardstock, and a second one without the center from Silver Glitter cardstock. I use 1 8 inch score tape around the opening of the circle and attach an acetate circle which I cut from a circle die. You can use any suitable circle die for this, or you can cut the open scallop circle and trim off the scalloped edge. Next, I cut a wide circular ring from foam adhesive sheets that will form the walls to house the sequins in the shaker. Again, you can do this with any circle dies, 
or you can use the open scallop circle die with the second piece in the center and trim off the scalloped edge. I placed sparkling clear sequins from my stash and secured the silver glitter panel on top. Then I set this piece aside to stencil my two stamped panels. I placed a piece of rolled up washi tape underneath the panel to hold it on my grid mat. Then I placed the stencil on top and secure it with washi tape. I used a coordinating blender brush with strawberry milkshake ink and lightly blend across the entire stencil. I used slightly more pressure around the edges of the stencil, but in general I tried to keep it even across the entire panel. I just love the reveal when I remove the panel. How cute are those little pink hearts? I will do the same with the pink panel. However, this time I'm going to use a white blender brush with sugar cube pigment ink. I'm using a very light hand with this ink, so the hearts will be subtle and show up more at certain angles than others. It's a really cool effect. For my third card with the shaker element, I'm going to use the same stencil, but in a different way. I'm going to shift it to one side and use strawberry milkshake ink to add hearts to the center portion of the panel. When that's done, I shift the stencil to the left and use cherry pop ink to blend red hearts in the same area to give it a bokeh effect. I've die cut the bokeh hearts background using the largest of the stitch rectangle stacklets. For the sugar cube background, I've die cut the largest of the frame and frame two dies from Peapod cardstock. I want to mute the background on the outside of this frame, so I use the same stitched rectangle stacklet from the previous card to cut out the center of a villain panel. For the strawberry milkshake panel, I used the largest of the diagonal stitched rectangle stacklets to add a border right on the panel. This panel is so beautiful and bold that it doesn't need much more than that. I trim a quarter inch off this panel and adhere it to a cherry pop card base. Then I'll add the bokeh panel to a strawberry milkshake card base. Let's assemble the cards. I use vellum tape to secure the vellum frame to the panel. This adhesive is invisible when used on vellum and I love it. Then I use foam strips to pop up the pea pod frame. Using my trimmer, I add an Oreo background behind this bokeh panel to help it pop and tie in with the stamped images. I couldn't decide on a sentiment, so I decided to stamp several and decide once they were all stamped and die cut. First, I stamped them in Oreo ink on sugar cube cardstock, then I stamped them again using watermark ink on Oreo cardstock, and heat embossed them using white embossing powder. I cut the sentiments apart since I was using the mini strips backer die to cut out these sentiments. I added thanks cherry much to my first card. I selected the black sentiment strip since it popped against the white background and green frame, and I attached it with foam tape. For the shaker card, I attached the cherries to each other and to the shaker frame using glue dots. I secured the shaker to the panel using liquid glue before tucking a shorter sentiment that reads just for you underneath the cherries, again using glue dots. Finally, I secured the pink panel to its cherry pop card base and layered a white strip behind the black sentiment strip that reads, A note to cherry you up. I kept this card super flat, which isn't something I normally do. I really wanted to make it dimensional, but it's nice to have some flat cards for easy mailing. Here's a quick recap of the three projects I created using the Very Cherry Kit. I created three cards using the colors included in the kit as inspiration. If you don't have additional frame dies, you can use your trimmer and make your own frames from colored cardstock, or you can use the open scalp circle included in this kit to create different frames on your cards. If you know me, I love making shaker cards, so I was excited to see a die set in this kit that allowed me to do just that. I always reach for white cardstock when stamping, so it was nice to stretch my creative muscles and try this background on colored cardstock. You can find all of these products in the Tailored Expressions web store at tailoredexpressions.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.